Sex Literature. We're here today around the Rogue Round Table and I'm going to be sharing my story today as a, well, somebody who grew up in a very conservative family um, where sex was like the bad word. We did not talk about it, guys. I got, when I was about 12 years old, I was like, how are babies made? Um, and because I knew that this was something I couldn't talk to my parents about, I turned to the other authority, which is Google. <laughs> Wait, how old are you? Yeah, how did you have Google? Google? <laughs> <laughs> like, like, how did you have Google? <laughs> and I googled things that 12 year olds should not be googling um, and I got most of my sex ed from fan fiction mm. which is not the best way to learn about bodies because nope. it's very <laughs> simplified yeah. and very... it's just weird. Mm. So my sex education had a lot of holes but I didn't feel comfortable asking my parents or my older siblings or anybody in my community around this because if you talked about sex that like made you a bad person you know what i mean because you're thinking about things you shouldn't be thinking about and this means you're going to get pregnant um yeah. <laughs> i'm being very dramatic at the moment but it was just like yeah i never felt comfortable talking about sex or asking questions about sex so that bred a lot of ignorance mm -hmm. um because yeah i think ignorance and taboo are very very like they're interlinked yeah. you know so I got to matric and I was still incredibly ignorant and that ignorance made me, um, it made me very insecure. Mm. And obviously if you're insecure you can't be sexually confident, which means that you can get into very dodgy situations. <laughs> because you don't know what you're allowed to do sexually, right. so you sort of let anybody do anything to you. Because mm. you're like, maybe this is normal, you mm. know what I mean? And especially as a woman, I think, because our sexuality is quite, not complicated, but, I mean, you're not just putting something in something. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's more, it's more complex than that. There's more to it than that. But nobody ever told me these things. Nobody ever explained to me, like, all the different parts of a woman's body yes. and the different ways you can experience pleasure, because mm -hmm. that was a bad thing to talk about. Yes. Which created a lot Which of, sort of fear. Is. It still is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It created a lot of fear <coughs> around sex. It meant that I had a lot of fear expressing myself sexually. Right. I remember very clearly the first time I masturbated, and I felt for weeks I thought I'd done something horrible. <laughs> I thought it was like the equivalent of like murdering someone. <laughs> <laughs> like, you, you know, and I was like, everybody who looks at me knows that I've done this horrible, awful thing. And Wait, when was the first time you met? So this was late last year, um, and you know, like that's old for most that's people. The <laughs> You are so old. I know, exactly. Like, I should have been exploring this right, long, right. ages ago, but I didn't feel like I had a right to. I thought. I thought touching my own body was evil and would send me to hell, mm -hmm. you know? So, end of last year, I started realizing I have this thing inside of me that wants to be expressed mm -hmm. and it deserves to be expressed. Mm -hmm. And I remember I went through a lot of emotions after the first time I masturbated um, and it was like, I've done this awful thing, but it was also like, hey, sex is a thing and I've explored this for myself. I haven't mm -hmm. let anybody else tell me how to do it. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's, yeah, it, it wasn't perfect after that. I still, um, yeah, I still have a lot of anxiety around sex and around talking about sex. And I'm like, um, you So know? wait, have you never had so, sex before? Or? No, so I am oh. still a virgin, um, in the terms of the all the, the way. Or, yeah, yeah, exactly. But that's the other thing, you know, nobody ever explained this to me. Mm. Like nobody talked about the hymen or whatever. I didn't know what was happening. Um, oh, but <laughs> like, around, yeah, so, so I've definitely explored other areas of sexuality and it's been so good for me. It's made me a much uh, more confident human. Mm. I feel like I can, um, yeah, I can express a part of me that's never been expressed. Mm. And I talked to another friend of mine and I was like, is this weird? Am I like incredibly abnormal? And she was like, no, she also grew up in a very conservative family. Mm. And after she lost her virginity, she had like a full-blown panic attack. You know what I mean? Sure. 
So I just feel like the way in which we talk about sex and the mm. way in which we talk about sex around young people needs mm. to change mm. and it needs to be more honest and it needs to recognize the nuance, you know? Yeah. But I've talked so much. Do you guys relate to this at all or am I a total freak? <laughs> <laughs> no, and so God help you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. You're not a freak. You're not a freak. Um, so the friends that you have conversations with and you're open with, are they sexually active? Um, some of them, yes. Most of them, okay. actually. Yeah. And so does that give you the room then to feel comfortable <coughs> in sharing your story? Yes, definitely. The speak the friends that I've spoken to who I know are still in a conservative space mm -hmm. and in a space where sex outside of marriage is wrong, I would not feel comfortable telling them this because I know that they'd be judging me. Mm -hmm. um, I was visiting a friend a few weeks ago who is st uh, very conservative mm -hmm. And she was talking about how she saw paintings of flowers that were sort of artistically rendered to look like vaginas. Mm -hmm. And my reaction was, that's amazing, that's beautiful, let's celebrate the female body. And her reaction was, that's so gross, why would you want to do that? You know? Um, so I'm like, I don't know, we just, we need a culture that celebrates the female body, guys. People and still think vaginas are disgusting. Like, and they are so beautiful. They're I, so I don't amazing. understand why you would think a vagina is disgusting is first of all you've come out of one um, but <laughs> exactly like, i think it's all it has to i don't know man sex when it comes to women are very stigmatized against yeah, them. yeah. Um, when when we are either open about our sexuality when we are just not afraid of having sex we're not afraid of trying positions we get like we get the stigma yeah because um, i remember when i was in high school when people were having conversations about who had sex with who it was always like yo that girl she, oh, yo, <laughs> she did this she did that right. yo if you ask a question about sex it's like yo how, like how dare you talk mm -hmm. about it? but it's not the same kind of education that guys get because for guys if they can it's easy yes it's easy we talk about sex like they even have they have so many words for sex it's it's, it's like yeah but it's normal it's it's a normal thing mm. yeah for guys it's, it's it's so normal and I, I do think it has a lot to do with like our home training like yeah. how we are trained to think about sexuality also home. just society in general yeah. it being very patriarchal also also, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I think also, but society also starts at home. Society, no, that kind of knowledge that you okay. get in the home, you walk up with it and then you say, "Oh, Simba, use a hoe." How oh, yeah. <laughs> Because <laughs> your sister or your mom didn't say, "Listen, Sima is not a hoe. Sima is a woman." having sex and right. being open to the fact that she's a woman and she's okay with it. And expressing right. that. And like expressing that. that. And I wasn't raised in a conservative, I wouldn't say my home is conservative, like, no. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say we are conservative. My mom was a nurse, and my mom helped a lot of young women, but my mom was very tight-lipped. <laughs> when it came when to, came to her, like, she just, she, she didn't, yeah. like, want to yeah. engage with that at all, and I don't know what that is about, actually. I, that, I'm that's sure. very interesting. One thing that has sort of come out of me um, exploring my sexuality mm. and exploring sex has been um, I've been talking to my sister about it because mm. we're incredibly close and we don't hide anything from each other and I'm like I don't want her not to know that I'm exploring the side of myself you mm. know and I thought you know you think talking to your siblings about sex will make it awkward and ruin the relationship yeah. but it's actually brought us so much closer and we can talk about this sort of thing. Are you the eldest sibling? She's the eldest and yes. then it's me. Okay. Yeah and she's married. Fantastic. <laughs> yes. Fantastic. Right? Yeah. I only say that because the Experience. relationship I have with my sister right. is, is that close. Yeah. Where I feel like when I come into the space of dating or should I have sex one day, she's the first person I'd run to. Right. Yeah. Like with anything that I feel wow. is kind of taboo, she's my first point of reference because yeah. she's way older wow. than me. She's and this married. is why female relationships yeah. are so important. Yes. That is so interesting. Yeah. Me, my elder sisters mm -hmm. have kids. But me, open my them. mouth and hey. ask them about me. <laughs> How dare you? You're playing games. How dare you? You are playing games. Are they gonna report back? I wanna, I wanna know <laughs> for for you, Lillian. Like you grew up in Uganda, right? right? Is there like a kind of sexual education? Like it sounds like a very weird way of asking this question. Like some American is like, "How's it going in Africa?" <laughs> for real. In, Did in your experience, success? right? In, in Uganda, like, do you guys? Is there like? A proper education in your community specifically? Um, specifically? I think it, it has to do a lot with tribes. Mm. We have a lot of tribes. Different tribes have different ways of approaching 
sex education. And then, apart from the tribe, then we have religion. Mm. So I went to a Catholic boarding school, a Catholic boarding primary school. Mm. We weren't taught that much sex education. The only thing we were taught about, I would say, sex would be hygiene. Mm. Yes. Sexual hygiene or like mm. body, yeah. taking care of your body, your body mm. right? Because vaginas stink. Sorry. Right. That's what and they then, teach us, though. Right. And <laughs> then the ma the matron in our class, there's this thing. I don't know if you guys know about it. Pulling the labia. Why are we pulling the labia? Oh know. my god! Why know. is this happening? Mm -hmm. So <laughs> we were in primary school, right? Right. It's. It's a, I, it's a culture, I think it's practiced in a lot of African cultures where it's supposed to be for sexual pleasure. I'm not going to go into the details because it's a bit gory. But so interesting. <laughs> yeah, and they prepare you for male penetration, but they don't prepare you mm. for your for your pleasure. enjoyment. Yeah, for yeah, your enjoyment. Your they prepare you for male penetration. Oh my God. And this is a very conservative culture. Yes, well. and this is us in primary school. 12 years old, you know, that Being kind taught of... how to be penetrated. How to, yes, how to prepare your flower for... Do you... Amy, <laughs> do you find... <laughs> well, at least they called it a flower, I'm so you know. Shook. I mean. I'm so shocked. In, in your conservative <laughs> upbringing, what, was your... Do you find that your education maybe might have been one-sided or was it just non-existent at all? Like It nothing, was almost no non-existent. Mm. It was almost non-existent, you know. Like, mm. um, there, was, there was almost nothing... When it was talked about, the first time I found out what masturbation is was at a church youth group and they were talking about why you shouldn't do it. You know what I mean? And I remember I was sitting next to my sister and I asked her, like, what is masturbation? And she told me it's when guys play with themselves. So already it was patriarchal. <laughs> it was patriarchal. It was, like, for, for, for men and it was dirty. Yeah. So a few years later, I find out I can play with my body and I'm like, <laughs> shit, I am an evil Mind man. Blown. <laughs> up guys um yeah just thank you for listening to this it's been good to share and to know that i'm not the only one with anxieties around mm. sex that are still continuing and propagated by our crazy crazy society um for those of you who are not here please share your sexual experiences if you are comfortable with that if you're not think about why is it because of this crazy conservative culture that makes us be ashamed of our mm -hmm. sexuality because we shouldn't be it's beautiful thing that we're expressing if you enjoyed this conversation and if you want to hear more of us talking about sex and you do then you should subscribe thank you like and share Bye. <laughs>